Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is October 19th, 2024. And this video is called Until Shiloh Comes. There is an obscure prophecy in Genesis chapter 49 verse 10 that reads, Until Shiloh comes in the uh, King James Version. I want to read that whole prophecy. Um, Jacob gave this to his son Judah just before he died. And it's verses 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 of Genesis 49. It says, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Judah is translated as praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp from the prey, my son, thou art gone up. Who eats prey? Beasts eat prey. Judah is a beast, a lion's whelp. He stooped down, he couched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him? Who shall change his mind now that he's an old lion? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. Judah, now known as Israel, retains the scepter even until this day. Believe it or not, Judah rules the world. He controls the United States who, through its actions, controls the world through the same very policies of genocide, lying, stealing. The scepter shall not depart from Judah nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Now there's two questions. Who is Shiloh and what is Shiloh? They have different answers. Judah will answer for what is Shiloh. Shiloh is the place where the Ark of the Covenant and the Tabernacle of Moses first rested when they came into possession of the land. And Shiloh prophetically also represents Jesus. The thing is, we do not yet see the gathering of the people to Jesus. As Hebrews 2 says, in verse 8, Now in putting everything in subjection to Jesus, he left nothing outside his control. At present, we do not yet see everything in subjection to him. In fact, we really don't see anything in subjection to him, do we? The church is not in subjection to him. As I've clearly shown, the man of lawlessness has been shown within the church, especially within many of her preeminent leaders. And so the second co covenant, the new covenant, has really not come yet, as I've explained elsewhere also. So the who of Shiloh is ultimately Jesus, but the what of Shiloh is 
what happened to Shiloh where the ark rested and where Eli and his sons ruled as priests. Eli as the high priest. Shiloh ultimately comes to the Jews when God's glory, God's gifting, God's scepter is removed from Judah. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, we see that God writes the name Ichabod over Israel when one of Eli's newly killed sons, when that news is told to his wife and she names her son Ichabod, the glory has departed. We see this happening now to all those in Israel as they continue their war of genocide against the Palestinians and all the other nations surrounding them. The final result will be the destruction of Jerusalem and the Jewish nation itself. Now for the last months I have been demonstrating in my flesh where all the world is. We are all on the brink of destruction, the brink of death. The United States and all of its Western sycophants, the Western nations of the European Union are continuing a lawless war against Russia that is driving trying to drive Russia to nuclear war with them. The United States supports Israel 100% with unlimited money and unlimited weapons to genocide first the Palestinians in Gaza, the West Bank, and now southern Lebanon. But that would be only the first step. But many have arisen. Many Muslims and even Christians and some Jews have arisen in places like Lebanon, Iraq, Syria, Yemen, against the lawless genocide, Hezbollah and Hamas are fighting for their very existence. And yet the United States supports Israel instead of those who are being slaughtered. I'm going to post a link to a video of a something that happened this week where Israel firebombed tents that were erected around a hospital in what little remained of Gaza. And I haven't been able to watch this video because I've been too tired today. But if this does not show the man screaming from the tent as people are burning alive inside, then look for another one because you will see it. I've seen it two or three times now. It's horrifying. It wasn't until I was in this last sickness the last part of my sickness that I began to understand just how utterly cruel and evil 
Israel and the United States are and have been for their entire existence. The United States has always been a genocidal nation, killing entire nations of Indians and then finally putting them on reserves. Israel began its campaign of genocide against the Palestinians before the UN declared it a nation in 1948. Now I want to give you a little uh, bit of where I am right now before I go on. I went on hospice care on uh, October 10th this year. The symptoms I was having are those common to people will likely die within a few weeks of the symptoms beginning. Besides the cancer pains all over my body, I've been constipated for four months and have tremendous pain in all my gut area. Nothing I do seems to work. My condition, though, is like the whole world's condition. We are all about to die. The powers that be, led by the demonic host that controls them, the rulers of darkness, intend to destroy the entire world through atomic cataclysm. We who serve and follow Christ fulfill in our flesh according to Colossians 1.24. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake. And in my flesh, I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body. That is the church. We fill up in our flesh what is lacking in Christ's afflictions. Well, my body is now filled up and my days are numbered. Let me go to 1 Samuel chapter 3. This is the chapter that the Lord called Samuel, and the word of the Lord was revealed to him. He gave Samuel a prophetic word. God said, I am said, behold, I am about to do a thing in Israel at which the two ears of everyone who hears will tingle. We are now again at that place. We are about to see the type that follows in chapter 4, fulfilled in its prophetic anti-type today in our day. On that day, I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from the beginning to the end. And I declare to him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be atoned for by sacrifice or offering forever.
Then the next morning Eli asked Samuel what the Lord had said. And Samuel told him. Then in chapter 4, it says, Now the boy Samuel was ministering to I Am in the presence of Eli. And the word of I Am was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. And so it is today. All the prophets are false. There's no frequent vision. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of I Am where the ark of God was. Then I Am called to Samuel and said, and Samuel said, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. And I am called again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. I'm sorry, I'm reading three. Let me finish it, though, because it's important. For he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, for the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. We do not know I am until the word of the Lord, the word of I am, is revealed to us. Pray that the word is revealed to you if it hasn't been. Chapter 4 And the word of Samuel came to all Israel. And Israel went out to battle against the Philistines. The Philistines today are the Palestinians. They encamped at Ebenezer and the Philistines encamped at Aphek. The Philistines drew up in line against Israel and when the battle spread Israel was defeated before the Philistines who killed about 4,000 men on the field of battle. And when the people came to the camp, the elders of Israel said, Why has I am defeated us today before the Philistines? Let us bring the Ark of the Covenant of the I am here from Shiloh, that it may come among us and save us from the power of our enemies. Today Israel falsely presumes upon a God they do not even believe in. For the Zionists are Satanists. They are not Jewish believers. They are not believers in the true God. There are still some. I am anti-Zionist. I am not anti-Jewish. Because the Jews, along with the Israelites, who represent the church now, will come crawling back to God when all of what is to happen happens. Re Jeremiah 50 verses 1 through 20 Why has I am defeated us today before the Philistines? Let us bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord here from Shiloh. Let us get our magic wand, because they even had come to the place where they did not believe in him, for they blasphemed him. And he may come among us and save us from the power of our enemies. So the people sent to Shiloh and brought from there Shiloh, until Shiloh come, and brought from there the Ark of the Covenant of I Am of Hosts, who was enthroned on the cherubim. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. As soon as the Ark of the Covenant of I Am came into the camp, all Israel gave a mighty shout so that the earth resounded. And when the Philistines heard the noise of the shouting, they said, What does this great shouting in the camp of the Hebrews mean? 
And when they learned that the ark of I am had come to the camp, the Philistines were afraid and they said, A God has come into the camp. And they said, Woe to us, for nothing like this has happened before. Woe to us. Who can deliver us from the power of these mighty gods? I am is the only mighty God. These are the gods who struck the Egyptians with every sort of plague in the wilderness. Take courage and be men, O Philistines, lest you become slaves to the Hebrews as they have been to you. Be men and fight. So the Philistines fought, and Israel was defeated. And they fled every man to his home. And there was a very great slaughter, for 30,000 foot soldiers of Israel fell, and the ark of God was captured, and the two sons of Eli and Hophni and Phinehas died. The two sons of Eli, that is Hophni and Phinehas, died. A man of Benjamin ran from the battle line and came to Shiloh that same day with his clothes torn and with dirt on his head. When he arrived, Eli was sitting on his seat by the road, watching for his heart trembled for the ark of God. And when the man came into the city and told the news, the city cried out, all the city cried out. When Eli heard the sound of the outcry, he said, What is this uproar? And the man hurried and came and told Eli, now Eli was ninety-eight years old, and his eyes were set so that he could not see. And the man said to Eli, I am he who has come from the battle. I am fled from the battle today. And he said, How did it go, my son? He who brought the news answered and said, Israel has fled before the Philistines. And there has also been a very great defeat among the people, your two sons also. Hophni and Phinehas are dead, and the Ark of God has been captured. As soon as he mentioned the Ark of God, Eli fell over backward from his seat by the side of the gate, and his neck was broken, and he died. For the man was old and heavy. He had judged Israel forty years. Now his daughter-in-law, the wife of Phinehas, was pregnant about to give birth. And when she heard the news that the ark of God was captured and her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed and gave birth and her pains came upon her. And about the time of her death, the women attending her said to her, Do not be afraid, for you've borne a son. But she did not answer or pay attention. And she named the child Ichabod, saying, the glory has departed from Israel because the ark of God has been captured and because her father-in-law and her husband. And she said, The glory has departed from Israel for the ark of God has been captured. It seems as if God's presence and spirit have been captured on the earth. No one I know feels the presence of God anymore. No prophet I know speaks the word of God anymore. The wor world is on the brink of atomic war and the United States doesn't even know because all news is hidden, hidden from them. There are three ex-employees, military people of the United States, even more, four counting Chaz Freeman, who was an ambassador Their names are Scott Ritter, Larry Wilkerson, and Larry Johnson. Their, what they say is profound. They all say that Israel controls the United States. 
That's why the United States does Israel's bidding and why they're waiting so long to strike Iran because they need the United States help to defeat Iran. We should be praying for Iran, not Israel. I'm going to post a few videos that have at least Scott Ritter in, in it, but there's a channel called Dialogue Works, and that is the video I'm posting with Scott Ritter. Um, Nima, who runs that channel, interviewed all three of those men this week, and I think even Chaz Freeman, I urge you to watch those because your eyes will be awakened if you are still a Zionist. Re please repent while you can because the judgment that is coming upon Zionism is a fearful, fearful judgment. They have blasphemed the Holy Spirit. Unless you repent now, there will be no forgiveness for you in this age or the age to come. Listen to what the Spirit says to the churches.